This report is brought to you by Cerule, makers of a new category of plant-based products scientifically proven to naturally increase the number of adult stem cells in circulation. This offers a variety of benefits to reduce the effects of human aging. I have a nagging tennis injury, a rotator cuff shoulder problem. Surgery is pretty iffy, so I've been a longtime user of glucosamine products. They don't help much, but that has been my only alternative. So I gave it a try. The rep told me that it would usually take several months before any noticeable difference would occur. First week, nothing. Second week, maybe a little better. But then by the third week, all of a sudden I realized it was a lot better. All I can say is STEM Enhance has worked for us and non-invasively. Yes, I could have paid $5,000 to have a stem cell injection into my shoulder, but it wears off. Why not stimulate the body's natural ability to generate the stem cells itself, which then travel naturally wherever they are needed for a fraction of the cost? One visit to a doctor can cost more than a month's supply of this product. There's a lot of science behind this. I wouldn't be advertising it otherwise. This works. Check out their website at billstill.cerule.com. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee on a single bottle purchase so you can try it risk-free. Hi, and welcome back to The Still Report on the Truth Be Told Network, radio and the podcast, and also on the Truth Be Told Rumble channel, or uh, The Still Report on Rumble also. We had, right before we decided to do our radio show, the news came out that Senator Dianne Feinstein from California has passed away at the age of 90. And I think it is important to note that on Thursday morning, she voted in the Senate on a bill that had to do with FAA regulations. And in that evening, Thursday evening, she passed away. Dianne Feinstein was 90 years old. She was suffering from a myriad of physical ailments to the point that a lot of people had been calling for her to resign or step down. Dianne Feinstein became a senator in 1992. She was the very first female senator from California. And she stayed in the Senate from 1992 until Thursday, the 28th of September. Her career was one of very many firsts. She was the first woman president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the first woman mayor of San Francisco, and one of the two first women in the U.S. Senate from California. Um, after losing the race for governor in 1990, she decided to run for the Senate in 92, which, as I said, she was elected to the Senate in 92. Dianne Feinstein was by far not one of my favorite people. I disagreed with most of her stands, and I am not going to be one who, just because she is deceased, back away from saying anything that I found egregious. She had many fine qualities. She was very persevering. She was tena tenacious. And she was, I would say, a strong woman. She had strong opinions and she did not back down from them. But one thing that she did that we cannot forget is she is the one who spearheaded the attack on Brett Kavanaugh when he was nominated mm. to be the Supreme Court Justice. She also attacked the religious beliefs of Amy Coney Barrett when she was nominated to the Supreme Court. Mm. There are several things that she did. Dianne Feinstein wrote the legislation that gave us gay marriage. Now, some people see that as a good thing. Personally, as a Christian, I do not. However, she served, you have to say, with distinction. She was in the Senate for a very long time, and she is now gone. And so I say, Dianne, may you rest in peace. Now, the question is, um, what happens to her vacated seat? Does the current governor, Mr. Newsom, get to appoint someone? 
Yes, I. my guess is, now there's a lot of rumors about everybody knew at her age she was not going to live forever. In fact, when Larry Elder was trying to unseat Gavin Newsom in the recall vote, and this was a mistake on his part, I think, he promised that he would appoint a Republican to take her place. Some people are saying Adam Schiff, you know, would be a... Uh appropriate person. Some yeah. people have actually floated the idea that he might try to get uh, Kamala Harris to be the senator. So that would keep her <laughs> from being the well, president. That, that, that can't be legal. <laughs> she, well, I don't know. She, she, she probably wouldn't do that, but that's, I'm, I'm laughing. I don't think he can appoint himself. Uh, but I, who knows? It's California. They could probably do anything they want. That's to. right. Yeah. I mean, they, Take us to court if you don't like it. That kind of attitude <laughs> yeah. that's governing everything they do right now. That, 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 they don't seem to care about the, the, the laws uh, in any way, shape, or form. So there's that. Um, and I, I'm not from California. And Diane Feinstein was reelected again and again. And so the people in California must have been happy with her service. I just wanted to. That was so well done. And, you know, you did 90% of that off the top of your head. That's... <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> anyway, thank That's you. That's why I sit here in silence most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's hard. Uh, however, moving on to our next, to our topic. Um, there is, there are glimmers of hope all throughout this country with all kinds of things that are happening. 11 Michigan lawmakers are suing the Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson and the Michigan Director of Elections in federal court for violating the United States and Michigan constitutions to change the election laws. The lawsuit claims in 2018 and 2022, the state constitutional amendments regulating the times, places, and manner of federal elections was changed unlawfully. Now, it seems to me that they did a lot of unlawful changes in election laws all throughout the country. Yeah, but, that, that was in many, in many states, and it was done in such similar fashion, you have to suspect that this was a Soros thing that they passed around how to do it, what's the best way to cut the corners and, you know, make it so that no matter what we do, they the Republicans have to sue us in court. And, you know, that'll take maybe three or four years to work its way through the court system. So it won't matter by the time this gets to the Supremes. Well, and I think it's very important to remind people and remind ourselves, too, that the legislature of every state is supposed to be in charge of the elections, right. not secretaries of state, not governors. And it's supposed to go to the legislature. And that's one of the biggest issues that we had in 2020. And it's not just George Soros telling people whatever. George Soros is funding the elections of these secretaries of states, et cetera, who are making these changes because they don't care what the law says because I think he has guaranteed them, look, don't worry about it. If somebody sues you, we'll win in court because we also paid the judge off. <laughs> but, but, if that happens in every case then there's no hope and yeah I, I just we, we can't rely on that yeah yeah um senator jonathan Lindsay, who is one of the legislators um said that this and this is a quote i want to quote this the united states constitution the supreme law of the land contains limited but critical election regulations. And when those things are broken, you have the chaos like we have had literally for years, but was really highlighted in 2020. Yeah, the last two federal elections anyway. Right. But the, the 2016 election, we really didn't understand the depth and breadth of the cheat that was going on. No, and we do now. And so... Uh, uh, I, my hat's off to the Michigan legislature, uh, Michigan plaintiffs in this case, and we will be praying that you 
have a good judge. <laughs> they're trying. They're trying to make changes. Wisconsin has made changes. North Carolina has made changes. That's right. Uh, we don't know what the every state is trying to do something, probably with the exception of California. We know. It's speaking of North Carolina. Um, the voter ID law that was put in place. This is why it's so important who is in office because the governor had vetoed voter ID, but because the legislature has now a veto proof majority, they were able to override that veto. The, the current governor was a Democrat. He and, is a Democrat. Yes. And he was, he won under very suspicious circumstances. <laughs> it's still suspicious. That will not be repeated. <laughs> That's right. And, but you were talking to somebody about that just the other day. Concerning. Yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, someone from, from the, I wanted to call it the registrar's office, but he corrected me and said, no, that's not the correct terminology. But uh, he, yeah, he, he said they, they now have a very firm grip on how to make these elections secure, voter ID, and he, he ticked it all off. And uh, hmm, okay, I didn't know that. Good. Yeah. Well, our the North Carolina legislature has worked really hard to try to um, override the vetoes of Roy Cooper. And uh, Mark Robinson, who many people know, is that had that viral video and ran for lieutenant governor. One lieutenant governor is now running for governor. And I just found out the other day that Hal Weatherman is running for lieutenant governor, which that he is a really, really good person and a, a, will be a wonderful lieutenant governor. If North Carolina had Mark Robinson as governor, Hal Weatherman as lieutenant governor, and maintained the Republican majority right. in the right. legislature, that right. would be wonderful. And for who's him. running against Mark? Uh, I guess uh, Mr. Robinson. I don't know who's running against Robinson. Who? Mark Walker. In the primary? Is yeah. he? Yeah. You're kidding. No. What an idiot, Mark. <laughs> you're not called to that. And when you're not called to something, back away. Nobody wants you as governor. You only served one term in the House. And so. Lost your seat. But he also lost in the primary. He he didn't make it. He ran for the Senate seat that Ted Budd has. Mm. And I told him then. He, it's not what you're. Okay. On anyway, this. let's go on. I, I found this humorous because Elon Musk is one of those people that you love him or you hate him. Speaking of Elon, he is right now on the border um, and, and doing live stream about what's going on. He wanted to see for himself what's going on on the border. Really? But I didn't know that. Yes. He's live streaming on, uh, I keep saying Twitter, X. X is right. just, come on, Elon, really? He, X is just such a, anyway. <laughs> That's Elon. How can you complain about the guy? I mean, you know, well, he makes yeah. so many good decisions. He's got to, just the odds have it that he's got to make a few bad X, ones. It's just, X, it's hard to grab hold of. He just uh, named it after his child, apparently. Yeah, well, who names their child X? <laughs> Only one person. <laughs> I mean, I feel sorry for the kid. Anyway. He owns Boring Company, SpaceX, and uh, Twitter. And... Um, Tesla. Anyway, that's a big portfolio. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and he's come under fire for uh, the Biden administration uh, for being um, anti-Semitic or something, or discriminatory in some way. Well, he's uh, under fire from uh, uh, the Biden administration also for his uh, failed or uh, his exploded rocket launch. And so now they're using that as an excuse to completely try to slow him down and mess him up. But, you know, those guys don't realize who they're up against. You know, he'll he'll find some way to get around it, cut a corner, whatever. The SpaceX will, mar will march on and right by them. Well, it hasn't kept him from all of his uh, tweets on X. It There was a rumor that he had fired half of his election integrity team. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he has actually confirmed the rumor of firing half of his uh, election integrity team, including the head of the team, because they, they lacked integrity. <laughs> no integrity. 
<laughs> according to him and i'm sure he's right <laughs> election integrity team without integrity in x, in x and i'm sure there'll be more to come out about that surprise me and the next story is along the lines of nothing surprising me you know they have they have come after the j6 people even people who just wandered through the Capitol and they have persecuted them and prosecuted them. And some of them have gotten horrendous jail sentences. And, and I've heard of torture and other things that they've done to them. And it's hard not to smile a little bit when you read this story. I shouldn't. Bad. But the, uh, one of the former J6 federal prosecutors was recently arrested for a road rage incident in which he stabbed another motorist. Now I know everybody gets angry when an unconscious some, motorist. Right. Everybody gets angry when somebody cuts you off in traffic or something like that happens. But for goodness sakes, it sounds to me like he has real anger issues. And it it's not too surprising for an anti-Trumper. Right. Right. Well, you know, ex exactly right. We've seen a lot of uh, Trump derangement syndrome. He was involved in prosecuting the guy, I don't know if you saw him, who uh, was carrying Nancy Pelosi's lectern around with him. <laughs> and he had it in his hands. He was walking through with, I mean, come on, it was a lectern. He didn't hurt anything. He didn't break anything. He didn't hit anybody with he it. Touched he touched Nancy Pelosi's personal items. <laughs> I know, really. And he, um, the, the, he allegedly stabbed an incapacitated driver. Now, incapacitated means um, unable to fight back. Right. <laughs> unable to, so it wasn't like he pulled a pistol on the guy. Or, what's the point? Uh, of there was there was a wreck, and you know this guy was unconscious. Apparently, that's the way we're reading this. Yeah, and he goes up and stabs him. Yeah, I mean, really, it's kind of like, what? well, I guess, what a coward. What a cowardly thing to do. You stab somebody who, you know, every entity, as we've said, in our government seems to be corrupt to the highest level. A federal judge has struck down a Texas law banning minors from se sexualized performance, including drag shows. Now, what judge possibly could care about this or why it was important to strike this law down? You know, it goes back to what we were talking earlier. All of the things that are going on in this country, you know, are problematic. They're all symptomatic of the same thing. All of the people, all of this corruption, all of this is about getting rid of God and getting rid of the Ten Commandments and getting rid of of anything that smacks of God or religion, because if they don't have a higher power to which to answer, then who do they answer to themselves? Then they make themselves God and they can get rid of all of this. But if you don't fear God, if you have no fear, you know, of that God, was one of the things I early things I was worried about Christianity. Why, why should we fear God? He's supposed to be a loving God. No, the term fear means you fear the repercussions of not believing in God because something, you know, your life is generally not going to go as well as. as well, it. it is, it is, as John Adams said, the constitution was written for a moral and religious per persons. It is no good for otherwise for people who are not moral and who, who have no morals and have no religion. It doesn't. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that the people don't care. You were talking about you were talking about the Michigan situation where they're suing the uh, secretary of state because they broke the law. They don't care about the law. They just throw right. the they're law. They're playing this gambit where they can push everything. They don't care anything but getting past the next election. So if they if they get overturned in court three years down the road, who cares? They can throw every lawsuit, every uh, indictment out there they want because they're just trying to get by 2024. And I'm going to tell you the law that he overturned. It applies to performances containing nudity, 
the exhibition or representation actual or simulated or simulation of sexual acts. I mean, I don't want to see that, but I certainly don't want that to be exposed to children. This is what this law pertains to minors. We're not talking about adults can do whatever they want. The performances that appeal to the purient interest in sex, regardless of whether compensation for the performance is expected or received. I mean, he strikes down the law that would prohibit kids from seeing that whatever we have movies that are rated G and PG and, and you have to be 17 to go into an R rated movie. Well, this just kind of forget all of that. It's just, it, it's lawless. It is ridiculous. It, it is just federal judge was the one who did the striking down judge David Hitner ruled that the law was too broad and impermissibly infringes on the First Amendment and chills free speech. Oh, gee, maybe he should be worried about free speech in other contexts as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I bet he isn't. <laughs> He's only interested in this. And going along with this, an Arizona school board member has filed a First Amendment lawsuit after being banned from quoting a Bible verse at meetings. All she did was quote it. It very explicitly says Heather, the board member Heather Rooks was elected January, this January, 2023. And she just read a Bible verse. She didn't proselytize. She didn't preach. She just read it. And so uh, it, during each school board meeting, the agenda included a brief board comments period where individual board members may offer remarks of their own choosing to talk about free speech. Since the beginning of her public service on the board, she has opened her comments by quoting a short scripture from the Bible. I bet if it was from the Quran, they wouldn't have cared. I mean, they wouldn't have cared. That's exactly why I put a scripture in the front of my reports and just try to make it relevant to the what I'm feeling of the current situation is going on. But uh, her recitation of the Bible verse was without comment, elaboration, or pro proselytization during her board comments, and it doesn't violate the. the um, Establishment, establishment clause, clause of, of the, the first, first Amendment. right it absolutely does not she's not trying to force anybody to believe in any particular religion you know i did a a, a thing where i worked one time where we had i i was bored because the uh receptionist was out and had to cover for the receptions and so i was sending emails out to everybody in the office and i put a bible verse at that uh, quoted from the bible um, every every day and at the end of the week I asked and I had a lot of people who went to church on a regular basis they were in Bible studies they had taught Bible studies these weren't just you know and I asked them if they knew where these quotes had come from and nobody knew not one person knew you know why they were all out of the book of Proverbs and they were all common one sense. of my favorite books in <laughs> fact my favorite book and they were all the people to whom i was sending were salesmen and every single verse had something to do with how to be a good salesperson huh. and they thought that i was quoting from some book of you know how to be a good salesperson and or how to win over people nope it was all all Not from the proverbs. book of proverbs exactly all from the book of proverbs and they were all embarrassed when they found out. I had to get my Bible out and show them where they were from. Um, you just recently did a story on Dr. Fauci at the CIA. I didn't know if you wanted to make any comments on that here or. Um, yeah, well, Dr. Fauci, it appears according to, is he, was this whistleblower testimony, I think, that uh, Dr. Fauci was uh, it, meeting with the agency bigwigs uh, at their headquarters building uh, in Northern Virginia. This was just revealed that uh, he, he would go in, he was escorted into the CIA headquarters building, but it was never recorded that he was actually there. So that's, so he was sneaking in there secretly, except he, he, it was known amongst the bigwigs in the agency. 
so so they could discuss um, COVID matters. And this was uh, when, how Fauci, uh, according to this story, Fauci was the one who convinced their, the, uh, the six agency mm -hmm. members who were tasked with trying to determine the origin of COVID. And they were coming up with something which is more like what we know now. And so Fauci was in there to convince the bigwigs to bribe these six people, which they did successfully. And so they changed their report to say that it was not uh, created by the Chinese and the uh, Wuhan Virology uh, Institute of Virology. It was actually a natural occurrence from bats. It's laughing while you were talking because Senator Rand Paul tweeted out um, a question poll, a poll, so to speak, where he said, did Dr. Fauci convince the CIA? Was the CIA convincing Dr. Fauci? Or was there a third person with a bunch of money who was bribing both of them? <laughs> and I said, uh, three, follow the money. <laughs> well, I think the CIA has got plenty, plenty of money. Well, if so. the, that was the case, then the six people would not be bribable. <laughs> okay anyway we said enough about anyway that we said enough about that um just going along in the theme of people going against the law breaking law the missouri attorney general is suing a woke as he calls it school board outside of st louis missouri for violating open meetings laws when they were making transgender policy. They were trying to make transgender policies in closed meeting, which is totally illegal. And the reason they did it was because they did not want the public to know because they knew the public would not like it. And there would be a hue and a cry and they would not get to get their transgender policies pushed through. And why is this transgender uh, making making it reasonable, trying to make it reasonable to the American public. Why do you think that's going on? I think it's because what they're trying, I was earlier when I was saying they're trying to get rid of God, but I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to normalize this kind of behavior. They're trying to normalize pedophilia. They're trying to normalize transgender stuff because, and they think if they just overrun all these people and if they get the children uh, to buy into all of this, then Pretty soon people go, oh, you know, it's just normal. Right. But, all, all of our kids are saying that this is good now. How right. can we go against that? Right. Right. I mean, but, you know, I'm glad to see all these things. It's sad that they're necessary, but I'm glad that people are staying on top of this because this is what school boards do. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people. You had uh, another story about a woman blasting a school board um, just recently. Right. Uh, a normal citizen right saying you know you should quit spending your time trying to to put all these uh things through which you know less than five percent of the population agree with that's why you're meeting in secret because 95 percent of the general population does not believe in this and does not want to talk to their kids so they have to do it secretly and in another situation the um secretary of state of west virginia has sent a letter to Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the House Appropriations Committee uh, Chair, who is Kay Granger, demanding the House Republicans defund the Department of Homeland Security until the agency fires election cheaters John Brennan, James Clapper, and Paul Colby from their so-called experts group. Now, if you remember, those were people who lied and said that the laptop was most likely Russian disinformation, disinformation and all this other stuff. And so this is the secretary of state of West Virginia. We're not talking about some Yahoo over here trying like to me. do this. <laughs> yeah. You're the Yahoo I was thinking about. <laughs> you know, this, I, I couldn't believe Clapper and Brennan are still working at the department of Homeland security. Can you believe it when they're proven liars now? And they have a security clearance. They probably have not lost their security clearance. No, you can't work there without it. Yeah. So they are, have uh, access to all kinds of information that they probably shouldn't have. But they're probably selling it just like everybody else on that side. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it wasn't just the laptop either. They were all, they were all in cahoots with the Russia collusion delusion. You know, they were, they knew that was a lie and they went out there saying that, and they're still saying it, that president Trump was working with Putin and all of this other stuff. Uh, you've heard it recently. This yes. Last, just this last week. Yes. Yes. And you know, it absolutely was not true. And he's been exonerated again and again and again and again. And, Speaking of the House, we now know that we have a government shutdown. <laughs> they were not able to come to an agreement, so most likely we're headed for a shutdown. Which... And I have to admit, the first time I wrote a story about this, maybe 10 days, two weeks ago, I bought into the Kevin McCarthy line that really a government shutdown is bad, bad, bad. But I did cav caveat it with, uh, I want to hear from the other side before I make my final decision. And once Matt Gates uh, got on talking about that directly, and he just he he blew uh, Maria Bartiromo away, and I went with it. So I was wrong there, and now I'm on the right side again. I don't see a shutdown as necessarily a bad thing. You know, Mark Levin was at the um, in the Reagan administration, and he said in the eight years of the Reagan administration, the government shut down six times. I mean, have you, I've never really necessarily noticed. A, now I, I don't know. Some people don't, I think they get their back pay if they're laid yeah. off. But yeah. um, I do know that Matt Gates has said he would not take his salary. If the government shut down, he won't take his salary until they come to some sort of agreement. So you know, he's, that's a moral stand for him, I guess. He's standing on principle. Yeah. So we did not watch the second debate. We did not watch the first debate. We watched President Trump in. And we probably will not watch any of them. We watched President Trump in Michigan giving his speech to the auto workers who were on strike. And I thought it was a great speech. I thought he did a really good job. They seem to appreciate it. He had some really good lines where he said the only time Biden's hands get dirty is when he's taking money from foreign countries, <laughs> which we know he's taken a lot of. And the Republicans held their very first impeachment inquiry just the other day where a lot of information was presented. Evidence came out, you know, to me, one of the house members laid out this whole timeline, which I found to be fascinating, where he said, you know, they met with this person, they met with this person, this legislation passed. The mayor of um, the Russia, Moscow, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave them $3.5 million. And guess whose name was left off the list of sanctioned people to be sanctioned when Russia, you know, went into Crimea. Oh, geez, it just happened to be the mayor of Moscow and his wife. They were not sanctioned. But other people were, I don't know. You know, the coincidences were huge and it was just. Well, now the, the, the latest story is this thing about a $250,000 wire transfer. It accidentally <laughs> went to Joe Biden's home address. That's right. I mean, how do you. It, well, All they can say is, I don't know, it was just an accident. And of course. You know, like most Americans, we didn't return the money. We just took it to the bank. Well, it, they say that Hunter Biden was living in Joe Biden's house at the time, except he wasn't. Yeah, that he, was a lie. He was living. The first in, thing they put out was that Hunter Biden lived there. No, wrong. No. He was living in uh, California. He was living in California at the time. But as I, I started by talking about the great debate. Um, which I didn't watch a whole lot of it, but I did, I did watch little clips that people would put up. But honestly, and this is the truth, I'm on social media a lot because I wanted to see what people have to say. And it helps me when we do the show because I remember things like Rand Paul's tweets or whatever. Right. And so I'm looking to see what people had to say about the debate. I really, really wanted to know. I was searching through X and, you know, Truth Social and here and there. And you know what I found? These are the comments that I found about the great debate with Chris Christie and Ron DeSantis and all the others. According to USA Today, Donald Trump won the debate. According to the Washington Post, a pointless Republican debate underscores Trump's dominance. That's from the Washington Post. According to the Daily Mail, 
Donald Trump is declared the winner of the second Republican debate in the Daily Mail poll, even though he stayed away. According to The Guardian, crosstalk and weak zingers had win to absent Trump at the Republican debate. Yeah, it was the little clips that I saw, they were all arguing and yelling at each other. Even Larry Elder, who is supposedly running for president, Trump won this debate again. <laughs> the G, according to BizPack Review, the GOP debate winner was not even on stage. But here's who came in second. <laughs> the debate. They fought it out for a second. That's right. And uh, absent uh, tip insights, absent Trump emerges victorious in second GOP debate. Uh, so it was like Trump won again. And, you know, who is going to, nobody can hold a candle to him. Nobody can, nobody. You know, it's kind of interesting, though, to hear Mike Pence say he was very proud of the, the administration, the Trump Pence administration, he says, but he trashes Trump every chance he gets. Pence so, the traitor. What, Mike Pence the traitor. How can you say, on the one hand, I was very proud of the job we did, but I hated every minute. I mean, I, you know, it was like. But I had almost nothing to do with it as vice president, and President Trump had everything to do with it, but he's a bad guy. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is because I don't like this person at all, is Frank Luntz. And he has is a pollster and, and does all of this stuff. And his comment was, tonight just makes it more likely that Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. And he said uh, he did add uh, one. He did make one prediction. He said this is before the debate. He said Trump won by not participating. And it irritates me to say that he had to say it. But he wasn't happy with saying it. And um, following up on what we have reported in the past, uh, we talked about the Georgia senator who had Colton Moore, who had it requested that Brian Kemp have a special session to investigate Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis is the woman who indicted President Trump and 18 other people. And he wants an investigation into her, in, into her investigation. And the Georgia Senate Republican Caucus voted to remove him from the caucus because he was trying, he wanted to defund and it, defund and investigate and possibly impeach Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. Now, boy, I bet there's a story behind that. Well, I, you know, I thought about it and I thought, why would they do that? This is stupid. Well, I think for two reasons. One is they do not want in any way, shape or form to touch anything that might come close to the 2020 election debacle in Georgia. And two, they're afraid of Fannie Willis. If she can indict President Trump, she could indict them. One more indictment like that, I think, would tip her career over the edge. Or get her a great promotion. I don't, I don't you know, maybe she, I, I you know, it, it, it's, you can, I sense the American people have had enough of this fake indictment stuff, and they're going to start striking back. I hope so. In a, an elective way, of course. Well, exactly. And I, you know, in a big way, in a huge way, I, I just don't. I have to say about that debate, this was so stupid. Do you know what the last question of the debate was? No. I mean, I, I happened to catch it and I was like, oh my God, please, really? The last question of the of the big Republican debate, here our country is on a knife's edge. And this was the last question. Who would you vote to throw off the island? <laughs> It was done by Dana Perino, too, yes. and normally a very common sense person. I'm, yes, I know. I was, she thought that was cute, I guess. I, I was know. very disappointed in Maybe her. Maybe the Murdoch boys put her up to it, said, okay, if you want to keep your slot, you better ask them this question. But after she asked it, what ensued was a bunch of yelling and bickering and backstabbing. I have to, I have to give Nikki Haley credit for having the 
stupidest thing she said. Well, supposedly DeSantis came out forcefully against that before anybody could raise her hand well, or whatever they were supposed whatever to do. Whatever they were supposed Score to do. Score one for DeSantis. Well, but in any know. case, it's um, small potatoes compared to everything else that's it was going on. DeSantis's big head. He said it's not fair to the others. No, but, but I have to say Nikki Haley said to Vivek Ramaswamy, every time I listen to you, I get dumber. And I thought, Nikki, that didn't come across the way you were thinking it was going to come across. <laughs> it's kind of like, and you're not that smart, so you really shouldn't even go there. Highlight it. Yes, they like to pretend that. And here is, here is something that troubles my heart, speaking of God. I don't even know how to say this, but so I'm just going to read it. The, F, the FBI has issued a warning about a newly discovered pedophilic satanic extortion cult targeting children online. This is what we were talking about earlier. They are trying to make pedophilia normal and they are trying to say, you know, there's nothing wrong here because they want free reign because these are lawless godless people and they want the freedom to do what they want to do. And unfortunately the people who pray pay the biggest price in these situations are children. That the FBI said their public notice that the cult uses many names and they list a bunch of different names. Um, and continuously evolve from subgroups and other different monikers to gain access to a majority of these groups Prospective members are required to live stream or uploading videos depicting their minor victims harming animals or committing self-harm, suicide, murder, or other acts of violence in order to be part of this group. If you want to be part of their group, you have to show a video of this, of you um, doing something to a minor and, and animals and all this other stuff. This is sick. It's demonic. It is sad. And that's my timer. <laughs> so we have got on that wonderful, <laughs> encouraging. No, note. no, we can't. We can't leave on that note. We have to say, do not comply. Do not fear. Trust in God and pray for our country. God bless President Trump and God bless the United States of America and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.